You slide it on your wrist. Make sure that this is on the inner part of your wrist. Tighten the strap and turn it on and wait and try not to move while it's inflating and taking the blood pressure. I need some hot gems. My dentary has died. I need to plug in. Get me electrified. I need to. And when it's done, it'll show a reading of what your blood pressure is. So as you can see here in the graph, we have the systolic and diastolic blood pressures. In the y-axis, we have the pressure in millimeter of mercury. and the x-axis, we have in the time and the seconds. So at the start of the graph, from the, the initial heartbeat to 0 0.5 seconds, we have the systolic blood pressure, which is when the heart pumps blood into the, to the rest of the body and the uh, uh, and, the, the, and then there's pressure put on the arteries. So you can notice there's an increase in pressure. And after that, from 0 0.5 till the next heartbeat, we have the diastolic blood pressure, which is the heartbeat between, which is the pre blood pressure between the heartbeats. And then the cycle continues. In the first picture, we see that the cuff is fully inflated so that no blood can flow through the artery. In the second picture, um, as the cuff begins to de deflate below the systolic pressure, the reducing pressure exerted on the artery wall allows blood to flow through it and um, sets up a detectable vibration in the arterial wall, which is the systolic pressure that is measured. Um, and then as the cuff continues to deflate and the pressure falls, um, below the patient's diastolic pressure. Um, blood flows through the artery smoothly because there's no pressure constricting the artery and sets up um, the pressure sensor to detect uh, the usual pulses without vibration being set up in the artery. Located in the center of the circuit board is the microcontroller, which functions as the brain of the assembly. It receives inputs and sends outputs in the form of electrical signals. Near the microcontroller is the pressure sensor, which measures the air pressure within the armband through a series of tubes. It converts the air pressure within the armband to an analog signal, which is then communicated with the microcontroller. On the reverse side of the chip are the air pump and a small DC motor. These act to inflate the armband when an electrical current is applied. Finally, under the motor is the speaker, which emits the beep that is heard when using the blood pressure monitor. Uh, which is a very sensitive part in the blood pressure monitor, and it can, it can uh, sense up to 5.8 psi, and which is equivalent to five, uh, almost 300 millimeters of mercury. But the Blood pressure monitor always only uses 200 millimeters per minute. Manufacturing is defined as the production of merchandise for use or sale using labor and machines, tools, chemical and biological processing, or formulation. After disassembling the heart monitor, we examined the components that made up the object. There were three main parts the strap, the exterior of the device itself, and the interior mechanics. We determined that some of these parts we could make ourselves, while others we could purchase. The objects we will demonstrate manufacturing are the engine pump and the circuit board. First, we created a schematic of our circuit board. Then we printed that schematic out. The next step was printing that schematic out onto toner paper. We laminated it and then transferred that sheet onto the copper board. As we peel it away, you can see that the circuit board is transferred onto the copper board. The pattern. The green material from this transferred. Alright, set it down in there. 
try not to touch the sides with your jacket. Okay. And I'm going to turn the switch on. As you can see, it starts to wash the board with uh, etching. It's going to just constantly recycle that etching solution over the top of the board until all the excess copper is removed. Okay, so we'll, we'll check it in a few minutes. Don't uh, watch your clothing there. Next, we use SolidWorks to design the components for the blood pressure monitor. Here shown is Austin and Steven in the Once they finish, they printed the object out with a 3D printer. Other parts could also be made, such as the 12 by 3 wrist strap using fabric, Velcro, plastic, and a sewing machine. We could also create the outer casting using SolidWorks and injection mold the buttons. Others could be purchased online, such as the screen, resistors, screws, valves, capacitors, pumps, and more. We can use websites such as Abibaba and DigiKey to search these different parts. So when we turn on the pump, the bag starts to inflate. The valve is on, so the bag won't deflate. Now the bag is fully inflated, so we turn the pump off and the valve keeps the air inside. When we turn the valve off, the air will come out of it and deflate. This is the air valve. When current is on, it keeps pressure on. This is the air pump. It pushes air pressure into the bag. A diaphragm pump works by a motor pushing down the diaphragm, pulling air in and out of the chamber. This is an animation showing the chamber. When the diaphragm pushes down, it pushes the air through the valve. When the diaphragm pulls up, pulls the air through to fill the chamber. The motor has a voltage rating of 3 volts direct current, a rated current of less than 400 milliamps, airflow of at least 1.2 liters per minute, leakage of less than 3 millimeters of mercury per minute, Maximum pressure is greater than 400 millimeters of mercury and noise level of under 63 decibels. This is a solenoid valve. It uses a coiled copper wire to turn electrical energy into a magnetic field that opens the valve to allow air to pass through. This animation shows a solenoid valve. When there is no electric current, the switch is in the off position and the valve is closed. When electrical current gets passed through, the valve opens and the air pressure is let through. The solenoid valve has a voltage rating of 9 volts and exhaust speed of under 3 seconds for 100 cc tank, leakage of less than 3 millimeters of mercury per minute at a pressure range of 0 to 350 millimeters of mercury. This is a Wilden PX1500 76 millimeter 3 inch advanced aluminum pump. The liquid chambers are alternately filled and emptied by fluid that is drawn through a common inlet and discharged through a single outlet. The diaphragms in each chamber are linked by a single shaft, allowing them to move in unison. The air valve directs pressurized air to the back of diaphragm A. This begins chamber B's suction stroke, which starts as diaphragm B is moved toward the center of the pump, thereby creating a vacuum in chamber B. 
Atmospheric pressure then forces fluid into chamber B past the inlet ball valve. When the pressurized diaphragm A reaches the limit of its discharge stroke, the air valve redirects pressurized air to the back of diaphragm B. This begins the discharge stroke of chamber B. The hydraulic forces developed inside of chamber B force the inlet ball onto its seat and the discharge ball off its seat. This condition allows fluid to flow through the pump discharge. The same process occurs in the opposite chamber, constituting one full cycle. The pump will continue to run until inlet air supply is interrupted or discharge pressure rises to equal that of the air inlet pressure. Firstly, we know we can get our systolic pressure and our diastolic pressure from the machine, right? And the systolic pressure was get when when your blood vessel gets the first blood, uh, and uh, it's the time that the first peak came when the air pressure was dropping from 200 millimeter um, mercury from that value and uh, we can get the first peak and that's a diastolic pressure it's kind of a, a wave it's weird but uh, yes it's uh, it, it will work so what was happening with the graph was that it wasn't how you commonly associate the rb graph as a wavy function but rather what's happening is if heartbeat was strong enough, it would displace it in kind of spikes rather than the waves because the sensor wasn't sensitive enough to detect every thing. So for the algorithm, what we did was when it first detected a peak, uh, that's when we would store the time for future calculations. So then after every peak after that, we would store in an array. And once it was done through its cycle, once it finished at 55 millimeters per uh, mercury. That's when we did the computation. So we got 200 minus 55, and then we divided by the duration to get the average slope. And so our first value that we stored, uh, we'll put in time for that slope, and that's where we'll get our systolic pressure. And then after that, um, what we would do is we would read the array that we stored in a reverse direction. And if an array didn't store value, it would skip over it until it reached an array with a value. And that's when it will plug in the time of that array into the function, and that would when we would get our diastolic blood pressure. So another function in the original blood pressure monitor was that was able to detect your beach per minute. And this was a simple function to recreate. Essentially what we did was we would have a counter and every time it detected a peak, what it would do, it would increment the value by one. And then after the function was done, what would end up happening was it wouldn't last a total minute for the duration of time. So we would have to figure out a calculation that would multiply it by what it needs to get that beach per minute. All in all, what the computation did was once the user hits the button, it would activate the air pump, which will inflate the entire system to 200 millimeters of mercury. And after that, it'll disable um, the air pump and activate the solenoid, which should literally um, deflate the entire system. And during that deflation process, um, that's when the sensor would do the spikes, uh, detect the spikes and do the counter. And once that was done and it reached 55 millimeters of mercury, that's when the algorithm kicked in and detected the systolic and diastolic uh, blood pressure. And after that, you could store your measurements by hitting save, and it will store it for later.